America reached a horrific milestone. The country has now recorded 750,000 COVID-related deaths, an unbelievable number that has surpassed the living population of major U.S. cities like Atlanta, St. Louis, and Salt Lake City. The COVID death toll was exacerbated by the surge of deaths in the southern region over the summer due to the Delta variant. The states hit hardest by the Delta variant with those with the highest number of unvaccinated Americans, many of which were in the southern, in the south along what is known as the Black Belt. But the tide may be turning for the Black Belt states. According to data compiled by the New York Times, all 12 Black Belt states have experienced a decline in average daily cases over the past 14 days, led by Mississippi with a 42% decline, Louisiana with a 36% decline, and Tennessee with a 33% decline. Hospitalizations over the same period throughout the Black Belt have declined as well, with a 38% decline in South Carolina and a 36% decline in North Carolina and Louisiana. The Black Belt's sharp declines in COVID daily cases and hospitalizations are outpacing all other regions in the U.S. What's going on here? Joining us to discuss is emergency physician, Dr. Joffrey Varner. Dr. Varner, what is going on here? How do we make sense of this? <laughs> Thank you very much for having me. Well, the conclusions that people are drawing, it, it, it makes good logical sense. We've got to look into those numbers a little more. While globally, the numbers have gone down in those, in those states, it's a leap to say that the black uh, that the black incidence of COVID has gone down, you've got to look at things like comorbid factors as well as vaccination rates. But either way, it looks like those states are going in the right direction. So, so what is this? You know, some people were speculating that uh, COVID basically just burned through all the population that, that that it infected the people that it was going to infect, and the wave is over. You know, other people, you know basically said that, you know, maybe vaccination rates went up. Maybe some people were just adhering anyway, despite what their governors and their governments and their local and state governments were saying. But it still doesn't quite make sense to me because the vaccination rate, uh, unvaccination rates are still high. Vaccination rates are low in those areas still to this day. We do not see the same thing happening in other states. Is there some issue with reporting around COVID cases and testing around COVID cases that could be impacting these numbers at all? That is an excellent question, excellent point. One thing that we know is that there's a seasonal pattern to this as well. We've been in this for like two years. It was expected that we were gonna see a decrease in the number of new cases, which also means uh, a decrease in the number of our deaths as well. The fact it's happening in the black belt, it's not new. That's what happened last year in the black belt. They were actually slow to climb, but when they climbed, they climbed fast. COVID has shown it has a seasonal approach. We're in that season where we expect a decline for reasons that you just mentioned, for instance, vaccination rates and just the fact that people are getting vaccine. We're probably going to have a mild winter, but the models are showing that come spring, uh, our numbers are going to go back up. And so I think that in the Southern states, it's been proven, it's been shown that there are some reporting issues as well. But you're right, the numbers overall are going down. Let's just hope that it transfers to black populations as well. So, you know, some people are speculating that maybe this is because, you know, people in the North, Midwest, we're going inside because it's getting colder there and their rates weren't their cases weren't going down as fast but people in the south were able to stay out longer and it's warmer but it spiked in the summer so i didn't understand that at all uh and also it didn't hold for me because arizona new mexico and southern california are just as hot as the south i mean just as warm depending uh as the south so i didn't quite understand this idea of warmness in the south was the contributing factor to why it was was waning there, but not in other places when in fact it peaked in the summer. Yeah, that is an excellent point. I think that that theory was um, put forth by one of our leaders and people ran with it, but you are so right. The numbers did not show that, especially given that there were some warm areas that they didn't spike 
early. But one thing that we know for sure that most of those warm areas, they did spike. The question was when. Uh, Texas, Florida, that whole uh, belt, they were slow to spike. And they're also, as you mentioned early, they were behind in, th in their vaccination rates. However, over the last three months, they've experienced increase in vaccination rates. I think that the weather, while it's not been proven, uh, there's a there's a byproduct of it. People are are out. We do know that when you're out, you're less likely to contract it. However, with the Delta variant, you know everything's off of the table. Um, uh, different factors mean different different things. But you're right. There's something about the southern area which is just not following science. Right. You know, do you worry at all that? with the falling uh, caseloads in these areas that do not already have high vaccination rates, that it will, you know, uh, impede or make people not want to, or not feel like it's necessary to get vaccinated now that the cases are falling again? Oh, that's an excellent point. I am very concerned about that. With the, with the lowering of the cases, people are saying, hey, I survived so far. But what they fail to I realize, you may have survived this first round, but it doesn't mean that it's not going to come back. So you're right. People are thinking, I haven't been vaccinated. I am okay. The cases are going down. I am, I am good. It makes, it makes good logical sense. But if they look at the last two years, the cases are going to go down, but they're soon going to rapidly go up. And the best thing you can do for your family, the best thing you can do for your community as well is to go ahead and get vaccinated because we also know that we've got 250 million test cases as it relates to to this vaccine but please everyone needs to, to like be aware the numbers are going down but the models are showing they're going to come back up very very soon it, 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 is that what you believe is going to happen with this i mean i'm just trying to figure out what do you see the future as is the future just that we're always going to be caught in this in these waves and surges and ebbs and flows, and that this thing is just gonna be with us like the flu? You nailed it. This thing is going to be endemic. This thing is gonna be with us for a, a while. And the models also show that those who are not vaccinated, not will contract the virus, may anyone who's unvaccinated will contract this virus. The models show that each and every model, and you're right, this is going to be with us like the flu. Those who are vaccinated, when they contract it, are going to have fewer and mild and milder symptoms. If you're not vaccinated, you run that risk of having a negative outcome of being hospitalized, seeing me in the ER, having a tube placed down your throat. But Charles, you nailed it. At the end of the day, it's endemic. It's going to be here. It's going to be here for like several years. Now it's just a matter of how we move within the COVID era and how we make sure that that we maintain our safety as well as the safety for our families and our fellow citizens. Dr. Joffrey Varner, thank you so much for joining us, helping to us to, ex to explain that and understand that because it was really mystifying for me.